Yeah, so basically the intent of the robot is for it to be a water monitoring device or water remediation. So the where the goal is to put plants onto the frame of the robot and when this robot is put into water and is made to move, the roots of the plants are going to be in contact with the water and over time like as the robot traverses the lake, the, pl the roots are going to absorb any contaminants or pollutants into the water and so it's going to clean whatever area this chooses to go in. And overall this is going to be paired with another robot that can detect in what area of the lake there are high, high concentrations of pollutants or nutrients. And so after the detection, this goes to the appropriate area and uses the, its sensor capabilities to avoid all obstacles and find the area with the most pollutants. And after cleaning it, it goes to the next area and carries on until the entire lake is as clean as it can be. Can I try it? Oh, yeah. Or it's a little too close. Yeah, we well, the purpose and function of this robot is to go out and clean wetland waters. So you put the plant here and the roots dangle down through the mesh. And the roots absorb the pollutants and uh, suck them up and spit out oxygen for a very oxidized and healthy water. These are robotic chinumpas. We have, there's an Arduino Mega, which is connected to a breadboard, which is then connected to motor controllers. So I help students figure out what wires they need to plug in where so that then they could write code that would control the motors and read information from a distance sensor, which helps the robot avoid obstacles. Oh, because it's two, it's not three. So all I'm trying to do is I'm trying to show you how old these things are and how old wetlands are and what has happened to them since and how we've brought all of that back in today's day and age and how you are now going to use technology to basically harvest the benefits from it. I think with exposing kids to the connection between technology and environmental science uh, we are really setting up a lot of uh, people to do some very interesting projects. So they're building a wind turbine generator where they're going to actually now have a mock competition and I've asked them to research blade designs. So they're going to do a blade and they will uh, figure out how much wind power it generates. We're going to actually measure the wind speed with an anemometer. And then with the multimeter, we're going to see how much voltage that they're going to generate. And so whoever generates the most wins. So over here, you can see while the winds, while the blades are turning, it causes this gear over here to turn. It's not turning very quickly, so we put a little gear in here. This is 32 gears and 8 gears. So that's a ratio of 4. So this spins 4 times faster, and it goes into our motor, which then generates state. Yeah. yeah, it generates energy down into here. So if you were to touch these, it would shock you. Mm -hmm. yeah. This experiment was very interesting. Let me just say that. <laughs>